everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I'm bringing you an unboxing, a very long unboxing of Midara. Now this is a uh, game that I, I was not expecting to have. Uh, Succubus Publishing was nice enough to send me a, a Kickstarter edition of the game. Now, so I'm not sure, A, I'm not sure if the game's coming to retail, B, I'm not sure if the retail version will be exactly what you see here. There is a promo box I got as well, which I'll be doing a separate unboxing for. Uh, it'll come out right after this video, so we shouldn't have to wait very long for that. Now, because of how long this unboxing is, I have done, I'm gonna do something with this that I haven't done before. I'm actually gonna put timestamps in the description. Normally I only do that for my how to play videos, but for this one, I'll put timestamps because I, I unbox it in a relatively orderly fashion, and so I feel like I can kind of timestamp it and you can go straight to the, the component you wanna see in this unboxing. So have fun with this. I had a lot of fun unboxing this one, so we're gonna get right into it. If you uh, do wanna support the channel in any way, be sure to check the description below for various ways you can do that, and follow me over on Twitter, at Board Offline. All right, let's get down to the table and check out Midara. All right, everybody, so here we go. This game has pretty much come out of nowhere for me. This is Madara, Unintentional Malum, Act One. All right, now, I, I don't know what all that means. I This is a game that uh, Succubus Publishing was kind enough to reach out to me and has sent me a copy. Uh, I also do have this, which I'll be doing a separate unboxing video for. This is the promo box. No idea, obviously, what comes in there but we will do that in another video that will come out shortly after this one. Let me tell you, this. so this box is not quite, it's probably about three quarters the size of the Kingdom Death box, but I gotta say, it is probably at least as heavy. I, I couldn't believe it when, like, when I picked this box up for the first time. I mean, it is a heavy, heavy box. So this is by Succubus Publishing, designed by Brook, Brooklyn Lundeberg, developed by Alex Hansen, Clayton Helm, Brenna Moncour. I hope I'm pronouncing all your names right. Let's go on and, and flip this baby over real quick. I, I, I'm not even joking. This thing is very heavy. Okay, so I could get a quick look at some of the minis that are in here right here, obviously. Um, it's an NDG, by the way, that was on the front too. Narrative-driven game. This has... I mean, you'll see in a second, I've done some research on the game ever since I found out about it. It has a, I think, 400-page book of, of narrative. It's pretty crazy. Uh, you know, you got all this different stuff in here. 405 item cards, uh, 348 mini cards, 70, 79 large cards. Um, let's see, where's the... It just said, okay, just as one adventure book doesn't tell you how big. We'll get we'll obviously get to that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and flip this back over. And we're going to get right into this box and gotta say right off the bat the artwork is just phenomenal okay okay so right off the bat get right into these minis and look at these guys all right let's you know what let's start with the big guys over here this this is just really really cool I, I mean it looks like I don't even know I don't even I don't even know what I'm looking at here this is crazy so okay it looks like these are some kind of maybe pixies or fairies up here or something but I don't know if this thing is also you know alive or what's going on here all right so what else we got so here's this guy. I believe this is the guy from the cover. And you saw him on the back of the box too, I think. And then we've got this guy with this massive claw over here. And is that some kind of blade weapon there? That's huge. And what else? I mean, I think, I don't know if that's a mouth. It looks like a mouth. 
I th- first I thought his guts were just hanging out. I think that's a mouth, and that would, that would make that a tongue. Don't know if he's got if, that, if that's his eyeballs up there. I mean, just really crazy stuff here. This is really cool. All right, look at this guy. So we've got looks like kind of a hydra thing going here. You know, these different mouths and stuff, different heads, and then we've got somebody riding him up here. Another. I don't know if that's supposed to be human. You know, I don't know what the scale is here. If that's like a pixie or a human or, or what the deal is there. Oh, that thing's crazy. All right, what else? What else? So here's a tree. Whoa, look at this thing. This almost looks like something. That's got a little bit of a Kingdom Death vibe to it. With the... So I can't, oh, you know what? I thought that was actually, I thought this was like a face of the tree, but I actually think that's a skull or a, a head that's been jammed onto the tree, kind of like this skull over here. So not as, not actually a tree with a face. I'm not sure. Well, oh, of course, what is that? That looks sure looks like a face coming out of the tree to me. Okay. And then this thing sure that looks like exactly the type of thing I want growing in my garden not sure okay all right close that puppy back up let's get into some of these So, there we go. I like that this is a original fantasy world with unique creatures. These aren't like your stereotypical, you know, monsters that you find in fantasy settings, generally speaking. This looks some, like some kind of thing that walks on kind of pincers right there. Like he's got his tongue hanging out, a little bit of a face. Maybe a stone golem type thing here. Some sort of blade. I don't see a head or anything, so. All right. Look at that guy. Look at that. I mean, there's some pretty good detail here, y'all. You get, you've got the face on here. You got, I'm trying to see if there's legs here or if that's, it's like a serpent type thing. But I mean, that looks like a wolf head almost. That's pretty crazy. And here, look at this guy. Ugh. So he's got like a helmet on. Don't know what's going on with that arm. He's got like a like a lobster hand or something over here. You could uh you could do it with a pair of pants. What about this? What else? What else? Look at this guy. This guy is pretty heavily armored here. So we've got this huge battle axe. All kinds of spinies coming off the back. No consummate V's, but that's fine. And then this guy with these lots of very large weapons I'm noticing in here. And a if I didn't know better, I'd say that moron was dabbing, which would be very unfortunate if that's the case. He's got four legs. Crazy. All right, now we've got somebody down here. I'm sure she's not dangerous at all. All right. 
let's see, seeing one of those guys already. So some of these might, we might be getting into some of our heroes as well, possibly. I'm not really sure. You can see the detail is pretty good on these guys. I like the cleaver. It's an excellent choice of weapon. Two cleavers. And this guy with the giant hammers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that some of these are going to be our heroes. So here's some sort of angel, maybe, with... But look at this little <laughs> pet that she's got. All right, ginormous axe, of course. All right. And here we go with yet another just huge blade. Looks like this one's going to get slung around. So it's probably half melee, half range type weapon we've got going here, like the horns. Got a tail going there. All right. She have, yeah, four arms. Look at that. With some, what are those keys? I guess maybe. Is she the key maker? I don't know. There's two of them, so I'm guessing she's not a hero. Um, thinking most of these, in this row right here, that are single models are probably player characters. There's another guy with the dual swords. Stocking cap. Looks like he's wearing jeans. I do know there from watching the videos, doing a little research. I know there is a uh, a jacket, a leather jacket called the Badass Leather Jacket in here. Looks like something from a 1980s music video. So that's pretty awesome. Here's this guy with the bandana and the beard and what looks to be a chain gun of some kind. if she's going to be a good guy or not. She's got definite monster vibe about her, but who knows? Maybe maybe the good guys can get down like that too. There's definitely a penchant for oversized weapons in this world, that's for sure. Must be more of a spellcaster type here with just the book, no other weapons of any kind. Oh, look at all those pages. Oh, that's cool. Look at all the pages down there. That's neat. That's a nice little touch. I don't think I missed anything else on the basis for any of these other ones. And then this guy. What do we got here? I don't see any weapons. So maybe this is another spellcaster. All right, let's close that one up. Oh boy. Okay. So, you know what? Let's drop down to here first. So this, look at this. Look at the size of this. This is the adventure book. This is the stories. Now, you know, it, it, I'm just going to flip through a little bit. It's up to y'all if y'all decide to pause on any of these sections here. But these are the, the stories you're going to go through. These are the, the, the levels, the missions. You've got, you know, all these, all this different stuff in here. I'm not really looking at it because I don't, again, don't want spoilers, but this will just give you an idea of the amount of story in here. You know, they, they block out stuff that, you know, if you play Gloomhaven, some people wish that there was a way to not see what's coming up. That way, you know, uh, you could try to play it blind a little bit. So they went and used this, you know, the old school. There's going to be a red lens in here somewhere so you can actually read this stuff. So that's, that's kind of cool. But I mean, just 
it's just page after page after page. I mean, literally 482 pages of stuff in here. That's absolutely crazy. Just so, and this is not rules. This is story. This is all story, which is what is so amazing. If this holds up the way that for, you know, if, if the potential that's here holds up this, it could be something truly special. What, you know, what this game's got to offer. So that's the adventure book right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip down to some of these books and we'll come back to all these components here in a minute. So this right here is the crawl book. So obviously with an adventure book, like what I just showed you, a campaign is the main idea here, but the crawl book allows you to come in and do one-offs. And so it has these, um, one-off scenarios that you know you could do and I, know, I think there's also a way to make it like a, a five scenario um, um, type thing and again I don't want to I don't want to go in here too deep because I don't want any spoilers because I don't I, I don't know if there be spoilers for the crawl but maybe there are um, but oh, I mean just look at this artwork this is just some absolutely phenomenal stuff All right, so anyway, so so like I was saying, this is more of a typical dungeon crawl is the idea with the crawl book. The adventure book is gonna be much more into the storytelling realm and uh, a campaign and all that stuff. So this is the bounty pack. I'm not 100% sure what this is about. I know that bounty missions are kind of like really, ex I believe they're like extended side quests where you can actually go after um, in this case, the Blighted Terror, and maybe this entire thing, this entire book, is the 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 series of missions to catch the Blighted Terror. Uh, I really don't. Well, again, I'm going to try not to go too deep into these books. So here's a diagram book. I'm not sure what this is about at all. I'm sure that'll be explained in the rules. You can see we've got all these different diagrams. I mean, that's what it says. It's a diagram, but I really have no idea what this is about at all. Uh, that's another, what, 51 pages of stuff in that book. And, oh, let's go back over to the crawl book real quick. I'll just show you this. The crawl book has, um, 41 pages of stuff again in here. So moving on down here, we've got, here's the rule book. All right. So the rule book itself comes out to 75 pages. Now, how much of that is, so we've got an index here in the back. Here's the adventure sheet, uh, I guess for tracking your um, campaign. Here's some variants, a Draxus battle dice. So that's a mini game within the game. So, many, so I really think 16, at least 69 pages, maybe 70 if you include this, are actual rules for the game. So, I mean, let's just kind of flip through this real quick and you know, kind of see what we've got going on here. So as we go through it, it does, I mean, there's lots of artwork in here. So that's obviously taking up some of the space, but there is a lot of text in here too. This, this game, you know, without even being released yet is already, I believe in the mid threes on board game geek for complexity. And I'd be, I'll be interested to see as people start receiving their copies, if that rating goes up or down, I have a feeling that mid threes is probably the minimum of where it's going to stay at. So you can see that as you go through this, lots of, it does have lots of picture explanations and everything, but it's not going to be just a simple jump into it and run. It's going to take some research, especially if you're the one who's running the game. So, all right, so that though is the actual rule book. And so I think that's all the books. All right, so now, all right, so this obviously, stop, hidden card deck, large hidden card, do not reveal cards in this deck until specifically show you to do so. Not going to, so there's a star, so this is the top. Not gonna open that at all. That will stay packaged as will the small hidden card deck and the medium hidden card deck. All that's gonna stay hidden. So, oh, here's this thing. Oh, that one, that's not good. All right, so it's a little bit damaged. 
But I mean, it's obviously still going to do its job. I mean, that's that is a little annoying that it's like that. But you know, I'm sure this will still function properly. But something to keep in mind when you're opening yours, see if if yours might have got banged up a little bit. It looks like perhaps no, it wouldn't have fit in there. But you can see this packaging kind of burst open a little bit. So since that's open, let's go ahead and go into this. Well, Sanctus, let's see. These are okay. Okay, so. I know there are disciplines in the game. That's that's like the essentially the uh, the the tech tree, right? Your skill tree, I guess, really is what it would be. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll open this one up. And there's, I believe, five different disciplines. Sanctus is one of them. All right. So. So you can see, so Aspect is a Sanctus. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There you go. Aspect is a Sanctus level one uh, discipline. Again, there you go, Sanctus level one. It's uh, passive and a plus two movement, I guess. Movement point cost is not increased by terrain or allies. Okay. And here's one, Guardian Angel is another level one Sanctus. At any time, you heal equal to half your maximum HP. So these are the skill tree, you know, as you go through, let's see. So those are some level ones. Let's, let's find, so here is a level two, Ascension. Um, it's got passive. You may spend intervention tokens as if they were SP, whatever that is. Increase the amount of intervention tokens you have by plus one. Exhaust, make a move. You have flight for the duration of this move, all right? And so those are level two. But then you can see the uh, some other disciplines. Here's subterfuge. And this is a level four subterfuge card. Let's see what that is real quick. Blot out the sun. Make a attack of some kind. After this action ends, make a separate attack of the same kind against each figure adjacent to the target of the initial attack, ignoring range and line of sight. Throwing shade is the uh, quote there. All right, so... Um, and cru cruor, I'm gonna have to look that word up, see what it means. But uh, let's take a look at a level four for that. Here we've got bring the shadows, move six spaces. This movement counts as your move action and does not provoke break attacks. During this movement, you may move through opponents, then cast a spell six against each figure move through, ignoring SOI, not sure. Deal a blue die of magic damage and inflict darkness. All right, so like I said, Sanctus, Cruor, Subterfuge. You know what, let's look up Cruor real quick. Okay, so Cruor is the clotted portion of coagulated blood according to the quick Google definition I just looked up. So blood magic, maybe? I, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, but regardless, you can be sure it's not gonna be good for the bad guys, I guess. So let's open up these other another pack of discipline cards here. All right, so here's some more of the crewer cards. We'll go on and put those level fours on top of it. And here we have assemblage. Okay, so let's see one of these real quick. Soul bond. Assemblage level four passive. While you control an Esper, you each gain during your dodge roll uh, to black die maybe. Add plus one to dodge, conviction upgrade, green die, plus one, whatever that is. Gotta love, gotta love unboxings. All right, so wait, I know there's gotta, I think there's, hmm, oh. There's some more. Okay, so here, let's go into this because this has loot in here as well. But let's go into this one real quick. Gentle, gentle. Okay, let's put these aside. Let's look at the discipline cards first. All right, so down here we've got some more Sanctus. Let's look at level four Sanctus because we just looked at a level two a minute ago. So. The only truth, Sanctus, level four, passive, increase the amount of intervention tokens you can have by plus one. Exhaust all allies within SOI 
I'm trying to think what SOI could mean. I want to, it feels like it's a line of sight type thing, but I just don't know what those letters stand for. Gain an intervention token, all right? And the fifth discipline, martial. Will to live, martial level four, passive, plus four, whatever. When you receive damage equal to remaining health points, instead of being defeated, remain in play. At the end of your next turn, you are defeated. Okay, so you kind of like have that last gasp, I guess, of, of fight in you. So what do we have here? These are Tatva, Animism, Trist Tristram Spirit, Yuxa. I don't know. I don't know what these are. The artwork continues to just be absolutely come on, focus. Pretty crazy. Okay. Moving on to the loot. So this is just looks like actual gold loot here. My camera's having problems. It keeps trying to focus back here. So I'm trying to give it enough in the foreground here for it to focus. All right, but this is referred to as combatant loot here. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna try to hit all the small cards first and then we'll move on to the larger cards. So, So these must, okay, these must be maybe, oh, here we go. Okay, now, so I thought they were the same thing as these, but these are double-sided, whereas these are initiative cards. So where do they start? They start there. So what are these in the back? These are upgrades, I think, for armor and stuff. So this is a Fragor, Fragor upgrade. Uh, Glowing core upgrade, passive immunity darkness, requires prismatic bulb. All right. Let's flip that back over. Let's go this way. Uh, Ethereum weapon upgrade. Passive remove the heavy tag from this weapon. All right. So you can see all kinds of different ways to upgrade. What do we got? Uh, you know, more Ethereum. Looks like plus one movement for a core upgrade. Okay, and then here are the initiative cards because I know initiative plays a huge part in the battles for this game and the encounters, I believe is what they're called. Gatekeeper, Grotesque Effigy, obviously that was that tree we saw we saw a minute ago. Uh, the Lich Worm, remember that guy? Tortured Immortal, Soul Butcher, that was that weird looking guy with the, maybe he's got a head, maybe he doesn't. Okay. All right. And that's just, you know, more of those as we go through. Enslaved spirit. All right. So moving on here, it looks like this is just going to be more upgrades, I think. We'll go ahead and open it, though. Yeah, so... Weapon upgrade, core upgrade, and you see strong armor, shield up, shield upgrade, exhaust. If you haven't reduced damage using another ability this turn, reduce physical damage dealt to you from a attack by two requires earth lao fragment. All right, so just a whole bunch of those. And you can see those are upgrades right there so that's a bunch of stuff right there here's some more initiative stuff going on here and looks like loot in the back of it all right so just a bunch of loot unique loot 14 gold monster loot item loot all right and then these are i guess more initiative more initiative cards here, right? Yeah, all right. Rook, Zeke, Cave Sickle, Cave Sickle, Water Lao, Earth Lao. All 
Okay, Blighted Guardian. That's the there's the the guy with the bounty. We looked at a minute ago. So where do we go next? Where do we go next? Uh, let's look at these kind of tarot size. Oh, look at that guy. Guardians of Impermanence. Impermanence. Excuse me. Exalted Esper. All other figures within SOI are dealt magic damage equal to half the total amount of damage you currently have. Abraxas Battle Dice. An adventure. Okay, so here's a an adventurer's turn. All right, so there's a reference card, standard actions, standard abilities. So these are espers. I know are almost like I want to say. It seems like they're maybe maybe like familiars that you're able to bring into battle with you. The Ambimelic. I don't know. All right, but there's more Abraxas Battle Dice. I wonder if is that like a that's that mini game I think. So maybe this is the reference card for it. Each round, roll the black die, and it's yeah okay. Another reference card there. The Pirate Wench who Abraxas Battle Dice. Okay. Low end Paladin Exalted Esper. So more Espers. That see again. There's another reference card mixed in there. Three witches, Minos, the contractor, another Esper, and a and the pit boss. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to standard size cards. So, guessing this is just, to, you know, shows you what it is, and then this side has all the actual information for it. The scavenger's quiver, probably the cost up here, what it is, it's a quiver, and then information about it down here. So let's flip over back over to this side. So you got magic arrow. You see these different colors, which match up pretty much to the discipline color. So there, that might be something there. Uh, that they sync up somehow. So we have magic arrows, enchanted arrows, barbed arrows, uh, the Kusarigama, uh, Flintlock, oh yeah, Scythe, Zanbato. Again, massive weapons. Ivory Axe of the Isles, Romstead Knight's Shield. Assassin's Punch Dagger, that's cool. Straight Shiv, Top Heavy Axe. Assassin's Crossbow, nice. Privateer Crossbow, Wind, Wand of the Depths. Sea Witch Fetish. Apocryphal Antiquity. Okay, man, there's some nasty looking weapons in here. Okay, all right, so we got some more, I mean, more stuff in here. Just so many things, Wrist Crossbow. Uh, Sylphia undergarment. What? Come on. When an opponent makes an attack against you. Oh, it's liquid latex of the occult. What? When an opponent makes an attack against you before they roll, this accessory gains resistance to physical damage until the end of turn. It's like spray on steel. That's amazing. Weapon straps. Marbus threads. Oh, I think we're getting close to the uh, Morbid Leather, Brooding Mantle. Come on, come on. I know it's in here. The Campaigner, the Lonely Mountain, Baphomet's Blessing, Foaming Cleanser. Nice. What does that say? Spick and Span. Nice. Exploding Arrows. Those are fun. Rune, ruined Silver Musket. Look at all these guns. Inscribed Shotgun, Unholy Chains. As you can see, from, you know, as I was telling you before, this is not your typical fantasy world. Okay. Bronson's Fixer. All right. Keep going. Dagger of Ruination. Devil's Handshake. There are some fantastic names in here. 
uh, Night Stalker's Trophy, the, what, Septogent? Sure. Nomad's XL Quiver. Casualty Engine. Ethereum uh, Couture, Couture, Helmet and Gauntlets, sure, Ethereum Coat, Carapace of Attunement, Plate of Superiority, The God Machine. We're still going here, y'all. Oh, there it is. There it is. All right, so Long Sword, Short Sword, Hand Axe. Some more typical stuff. Morningstar, Qatar. Always fun. Halberd. How or how how Halberd? Halberd? Halberd. Hand crossbow. Moving on through Magic Talisman. Wanna to get to the back here. Quiver. Fate engine. Flight fight drive. Okay. Too many belts. That's right. That's too many. Cloak. Occult shirt. Occult shirt. And the badass leather jacket. Only costs you 15 gold. Look at that. When making a dodge, re-roll your dodge roll. And passive reduced physical damage dealt to you from, let's say, melee attacks by two. Very cool. I mean, I think I'm going to... These last few packs of... of I'm just going to go through these real fast... Because, I mean, you can just see it's just never ending. There's just so much hit, hitting piercings of protection. That's cool. All right. I mean, okay, markings of strength. These are kind of unique. Oh, my gosh. Shoes of Jordan. It just never stops. There's just so much, so many cool names in here. Swashbuckler's garb. Perpetrator's cat suit. Okay. Barbed breastplate. That looks terrifying. What was that? What was that? A lining machine? Gene Tweak. Demon Voucher. Phase Token. Bounty Arrows. Guy Machine. Again, Hardcore Core. Magic Frag, Bearer of Justice, Sentient Body Suit. Wait, what? That thing's alive. All right, Sentient Body Suit, Magical Leather Dress, Hasten Decor, Hadram's Lost Bow, Angel Plate, Pathos, Inherited Contract. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing. Scrying Eye. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's just, I just can't believe how many different things there are in here. Icker Drenched Chain, Soul Cleaver. Woo! Two more of these packs. Two more. What else could we possibly have? So we got a chain pick. We've got. Uh, the Dweller's Longsword. We've got Sloan the Great Wall. Ball of the Mountain. War Axe of... Yeah. The Repeating Crossbow. Very nice. Wand of Coiled Fragments. Evil Doll. Blooming Tome. A low-profile quiver. Badman's Book of Baddies. Always, uh, always bad. Bottomless Beverage. Very nice. Collar of Ebon Rule, Divine Belt Buckle of Swag. <laughs> Fitted Hat of Protection, okay? Necklace of Immortality, Puff Brand Classy Tabacky, all right? And Soothsaying MP3 Player. Always, always important to have when you're adventuring. After an opponent with SOI makes a conviction check, re-roll their conviction check. And one more. Another badass leather jacket, of course, and the cuirass, utility, ability core, 
Deflection Core, Bottled Blessing, Ubiquitous Plank, Hyper Energy HP Potion, Magic Bomb, <laughs> MF Fortitude, Smoke Bomb, Throwing Knives, Vitality ju or Vitality Juice Box. Okay, juice is always good. That's a lot of those. Holy crap! All right. Woo! We did it, y'all. We got through the regular size cards. Okay, moving on to... Oh, you know, by the way, I never really talked about... As far as the cards themselves go, they feel pretty good. Um, I think that they are, are right on par with the standard quality you can expect from games these days. So I've got no complaints about the quality of the card stock itself. All right, so here we go. So Adventurer. So let, let's go through all of our adventures real quick. I think you start with four. Yeah, okay. So you start with four. So you got Remy, Remy Moretti. Okay, Natural Flight. Conviction is too purple, whatever that means, whatever any of this stuff means. We've got down here, you can see Presence, Lore, Agility, Perception, and Strength. Over here, we've got Health, Defense, and Movement. Conviction and Casting. Okay. I want a whole backstory on the back. Look at that. I mean, it, it figures. Why wouldn't there be a ton of backstory for the characters when there's that book that, you know, they're not going to skimp on story for sure. So here we've got Nightingale Arson, uh, Ambitious. All these stats down here again. And, of course, like I said, the story on the back. Oh, it is second... Second Princess of Alenia, and what was Remy? Daughter of the Black Hand, okay. Here we've got Rook Lars, Grand Physique. I uh, got this stuff down here. Prodigious, uh, pr prodigious Student, I think it's. Prodigious? Yeah, I think so. We'll say, we'll say Prodigious. Zeke Jung, okay. Um, a Nimble Fighter. Back here, we've got the auspicious air. Okay, now something to keep in mind, by the way. So we have four, these four adventurers, right? But don't forget, we've got this huge package of hidden cards, same size. I feel confident there's going to be more adventurers in there. All right, so look at these. We've got cave sickle. Anything on the back? Oh yeah. Oh look at that. I mean, there's just so much, so much world for you to dive into here. Cave sickle, waterlow. Animate, uh, Earthlow. Oh, you can see they. So we've got levels over here. Um, Tortured Immortal. Let, let's go through this real quick. So we've got, uh, you know, Lifetime in the Dark, uh, Hooks and Chains, Ancient Blade, Aberrant Limbs, Wide Sweep, Conviction Two, Casting Nothing, Plus One Physical Damage, Plus One Physical Damage, and then all these stats down here. You can see they changed depending who it is, Enslaved Spirit. And so these are just all some of the same people we've seen already. We've already gone through all the minis, so I'm not going to go through all this in detail, but just kind of let you see. Ooh, several cave sickles, all right. Are we back at the front? Or it's just several of the same thing, I think. I don't think I went through the whole thing already. But anyway, that's what those are. I don't think we saw that one yet, do we? I think it's kind of cool. Oh, that's that thing with the wolf head, but it, I thought like it was, it looks like maybe it's two, is it two different creatures? I don't know. Okay. Okay, what else do we have going here? Put that over there. All right, uh, here we got our dice. All right. These are good feeling dice. They are standard size. I mean, and I believe that that is indeed etched in there. Always good to see these different symbols, different numbers. And I did notice on the back, sorry about knocking the camera there, on the back here we have all the different dice and their different faces so you can see exactly what each die has to offer you. So that's, that's good. I'm assuming some are better than others, obviously, which is why there are different ones. Let's get these out of here. So 
so here we've got different different colored you know uh, things to clip onto your minis basically to help help you identify them until you get them painted if you get them painted but that'll help you identify them these are probably four looks like you have multiple colors here I mean one two three different colors and then three oranges not sure why that is and then here we've got the kind of uh, maroon color and purple right here all right so lots of baggies thank you very much always much appreciated here we've got tiles so let's break into these and see what these look like very very so oh, look at that okay so these the the thickness is is good i like the thickness uh, but look at can you see, look at that that is cool so that i'm guessing is probably like water or something and they've got that extra finish on there just on the water areas i'm guessing this is probably solid land that is a very nice little touch there because yeah look just in those little spots there and see that one's a little bit more see if you can right there see it there you go any, any spots here very cool all right so a lot of tiles here oh and, and you can also see that it's got these markings on it so elevate uh, elevation one elevation three so that's going to play a part in all this. And over here we've got elevation one, elevation two. All right, so a lot of kind of dank, dark places here. Well, this is some sort of uh, mining company looks like. All right, let's open this other one up real quick. Man, I'm running out of room on my table here, y'all. All right, let's get this one open. So just you know more tiles but lots of them oh yeah lots lots of colorful places too it's not just whoa look at that it's not just dark dank areas there is looking like it's got a lot of color to it as well which is nice that first set was pretty dark but this one has a lot whoa, more color to it oh look at that that is a cool area oh look and those little again the lights there have that extra shine to them that is cool. Okay. All right. So getting near the bottom of the box here. Getting near the bottom here. Let's see what we've got. Let me find a way to grab it. All right, there we go. So this... I thought I might fold out. It does not, but it's a it's sideways, obviously, right now. But this is a map of the entire area, I guess. So we've got the city of Elenia up here. And we've got Romstead, the Tema Woods, Tema. You see all the stuff, Fair Edge, down, coming all the, down here at the bottom. We've got, come on, oh, uh, Ostenai Farmlands, Gray Haven over here. Got some, uh, oops. Oh, I'm banging on the camera here, y'all. Sorry about that. Got some islands over here. All kinds of stuff going on here. The crater. I wonder what's going on there. And we do, in fact, have some stuff to punch. Let's see. I got to kind of tip this up. Okay, there we go. So, punches right out. Just the standard kind of hanger-ons there on the side. Nothing unusual about that tentacle all right so oh look at this on the back here we go check that out so these are all kinds of different tokens for various conditions and statuses i guess condemn yeah poison disease paralyze haste all right 
So I'll get to punch all this. Whoa, losing stuff. It does punch out very easily. Get to punching that out here shortly. And here you can see we've got more Twin Savani Spirit Blade Celestial Gigas. So I, I do know that I guess these are going to be, there's some standees in the game as well. You got all those minis, but there are a few that are standees from the looks of it. Well, and here's this guy again, though. What's that about? That's interesting. I guess you could have two of them. All this, all these different, these look like the actual heroes here that I, or what I assume they're all the heroes. Oh, but, and you have it repeated again, too. So that's interesting. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, go to the back here. Kind of the same thing a little bit going on back here. And I don't know if these up here are overlay tiles for the terrain, you know, for the encounter tiles or whatever they're going to be called. I'm good. This is probably maybe damage, but that's, I mean, I don't know, 50, that's a lot of damage. But who knows? I don't know what maximum health is and stuff in this game right now. So you can see just all kinds of tokens. You got different loot and dynamite. Nice. Okay. Dead branch exits, okay. And yeah, here you go. You see a lot more monster type creatures here. Here's that enslaved spirit breeze. Blighted brute soul stitcher. Daedalus, Lana and Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, we did it, y'all. <laughs> that's everything. All right, let's go back up top. So there you go. <laughs> so much stuff in this game. I was not joking when I, I, I honestly believe that the, the contents of this box were heavier than Kingdom Death when it came in for me. Uh, and a lot of it is going to be those those books, the, the, the four different books, lots and lots of pages. Obviously, paper weighs a lot, so that that is a lot of the weight right there. But there's just so much stuff in this game. Very excited to start getting into it and seeing what it's all about. I will be doing both a gameplay video and a how to play video for Madara. The how to play video is almost certainly going to be broken up into various parts. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, for anybody who's waiting for my Gloomhaven how to play video, that might get pushed back a bit. That was also going to be broken up into multiple parts, but that one might get pushed back a bit as I start focusing on getting this one because I really am excited about this game. I feel like if it plays as good as it looks, and if that if those those that adventure book works as well as it could. This could be something very, very special. I know I said that during the unboxing, but I really feel that. So we'll see, we'll see if it pans out. I have obviously zero play experience with it so far, but it has made a very good impression right off the bat. Again, thank you for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe and click the bell so you'll know when more videos come out. Keep an eye out for future Madara videos. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.